Hello friends, greetings from Warsaw, Poland. Today uh, we will have a very unique episode, something I have never done in the past and I believe it is an important topic because we are right now in the center of what used to be the Warsaw ghetto so as you can see here right now it's a mm, it's a modern city and what you can see here is the monument that was built to honor the ghetto uprising that happened in 19 43 and on this monument from this side you can see elderly Jewish people and also children that are going to their destination to the place of their murder you know we are now in a very very um, beautiful place as you can see there is a park uh, people are living here but in this place one of the most darkest history human history happened where we are now walking it used to be a closed area for the Jews over 400,000 Jews were closed in this area and they awaited their death uh, because they were transported from this place to the death camps and the Warsaw Jews they were transported to Treblinka camp which is the closest to Warsaw so here you can see the other side of this monument of the ghetto uprising heroes so you saw from the other uh, from the other side there were elderly Jewish people and also there were children from this side this monument shows the heroes the fighters that stood up against all odds and decided to fight back and it happened in 1943 in April 19 so actually the story of this monument is quite interesting because it, it is supposed to represent the walls of the ghetto uh, also the the Kotel the welling wall in Jerusalem but the material is a black basalt stone that was actually uh, transported from Sweden and the stone was actually ordered by uh, the Nazis and they wanted to use the stones to create monuments of the victory of Hitler and after the war the Jewish organizations in Switzerland they decided that they want to buy the stone that was reserved for this grim purpose buy it back and they used this stone to build this monument to honor the fighters so it's quite interesting and where, where we are this is quite interesting in the middle of this dark place of this horrible place where uh, thousands of people died and they awaited their um, their death we'll go to the place where there was a, a train station from where the Jewish people were transported to Treblinka but in the center of this ghetto 
used to be the ghetto they built a museum as you can see it's a very big museum it's a modern museum and it's actually quite a good museum we will not go inside because uh, i cannot record and use this material on my youtube channel without a permission and i didn't have time to do that so we will not go in but it's actually a good museum it's a museum called it's the museum is called pauline um, which is how the jewish people would call poland and it's a combination of two jewish words po meaning here and lin live so you will live here uh, this is how jewish people used to call poland but anyways if you look at the design of this museum it looks like a passage through the red sea you know this would represent the the sea and then you see like a passage opening that is going through the red sea so once again a view on the monument uh, every year here in april they have the common commemoration of uh, remembering the ghetto uprising so the bronze menorahs are lit up uh, people gather here and they remember those that fought knowing actually that they will not win but they decided to fight anyways so to tell you a little bit about the history um, the ghetto in Warsaw is one of the biggest ghettos uh, ever built it was created short after the Germans invaded Poland and uh, in the year 1940 uh, the ghetto was starting to be established in Warsaw and uh, what has happened is that uh, they put as I told you those 400,000 people uh, into a very small space it was if I remember 307 acres so if you look at the map of uh, Warsaw today you will see how small this area is compared to uh, the overall uh, overall size of Warsaw so it's uh, it was a very packed place and if you know how much people today live in Warsaw the estimate is about 1.5 million people and they live on a much larger area you can imagine how little space uh, there was here um, during that time uh, when those 400 Jews had to live uh, in this very very small area so this is the you can say the heart of the ghetto and you know this is now a neighborhood of Warsaw people live here uh, but they're ba basically everything stands on on rubble because this area was totally totally destroyed after the uh, ghetto uprising and after the Warsaw uprising which happened a year after the ghetto uprising uh, Mm, the whole territory was just leveled by the Germans and we will go on a tour I will show you uh, certain historical places that are important to the Jewish history uh, from that time period so we will go uh, actually to this train station where they started the transportations of Jews and uh, we'll also go to the place where the biggest synagogue in Warsaw stood and after the ghetto uprising it was blown up so here once again you can see this sign the Poland uh, Museum 
history museum of the Polish Jews. So it's it's not a museum about just the Holocaust. It's about the history of Jewish people living in Poland for 1000 years. And then after those 1000 years of history of Jewish people in Poland, remember Poland was the biggest Jewish community in Europe. Uh, and they lived in Poland for uh, almost a thousand years uh, before the Holocaust happened. So it's a museum about that. And uh, once again, this, uh, this name is very interesting. Paulin, you will live here. And sometimes uh, Jewish people would even call Poland uh, Polaniach, which is even, uh, a, even a more interesting name because it's a free word. It's a, it's a po here. Lin, uh, live, and Yach God. So Jewish people would, would say that here God lives. And for many years, uh, Poland used to be a, a place where the Jewish people felt the best in, in, in Europe. Um, and it's interesting that some of the Jewish people called Poland in this way. They really felt like it's their home, like it's uh, a place where uh, they can worship the true God and they gave such a such an interesting name to this uh, to this place so let's go on a trip I will take you uh, to the different places so you're welcome to join me we'll walk as we used to walk in Jerusalem but in a very very different uh, atmosphere and also a very different country and climate uh, this is the first time I'm doing a video like this if you will like videos like this from different parts also from Europe where you can learn about Jewish history let me know if this is something that you would be interested in so let's see uh, and discover the Jewish history of uh, Warsaw so this uh, neighborhood now this part of Warsaw where we are now it's called Muranov and uh, you will see a lot of monuments small monuments as we will walk those monuments uh, each of them remember a certain person or a certain event that happened in this place uh, so there is there is plenty of those here uh, because we are still in the territory of the Warsaw Ghetto. So now we'll go to another place of memory. Uh, a place of another very dark history and this will give you an understanding what was happening how dramatic the situation was that was happening here uh, because the people were not just closed they were food shortages people were dying on the streets uh, people were having problems with health uh, different disease was spreading because of the lack of hygiene uh, it was a very very dramatic story and uh, in that at that time not a lot of people from Europe knew what was actually going on so uh, this is another monument uh, as you can see a broken uh, broken rock here and this is a uh, a monument that was created to honor uh, a person called Shmuel uh, Ziegelboy and this person was actually uh, trying out in Western Europe in London trying to uh, give attention to what was happening and he was so upset that nobody really was doing anything Jewish people were dying every day horrible things were happening children were being closed uh, murdered and nobody was doing much at that time so he actually 
as, a, as an act of a protest, he burned himself and he died uh, in the process of burning himself up. So that was his protest against this, this injustice that was happening. And you can see the fire. Of course, this is the, the fire of the crematoria that was awaiting the Jewish people. And there is a quote here in Hebrew and Polish, and it says, I cannot be silent and live when the remnants of the Jewish people are dying in Poland. So a very powerful monument of a very dark history that it's not just Germany that was doing the killing but also the nations that were around that were not reacting to it and Jewish people were dying and they felt like nobody cares So, on those small monuments here, you will see the dates, 1940 to 1943, and this is the time from where the ghetto was created to the time when the uprising started in 43, uh, uh, in April 19th, and after really the, the uprising, um, everything was destroyed here and no life of Jewish people were, was left. So uh, now I will show you another place. Uh, and this is also a very significant place if we're talking about this history of the uprising. Because this is a place uh, where mm, the center of operation the underground operation of the uprising was happening. Uh, those, uh, what you can see here, are the remains of a, a bunker that was used by the Jewish people as a hiding place. In uh, 1939, there was a building standing here and it collapsed uh, due to the bombardment. Uh, and uh, underneath, uh, they decided to build this bunker and it was well hidden because of the rubble of the of the building that used to stand here so uh, in this barker for a long time the Jewish people were hiding they were operating also one of the leaders of the um, of the of the people that approached the Jewish people uh, Mr. Analevich was hiding here and finally, of course, the Germans found this place and they surrounded the whole area. And uh, a lot of people at that time, uh, uh, they surrendered, they got out. But some of them, including Anne Levich, they stayed uh, inside and they were not willing to give up. So they started to fight. And of course, it was a very uneven uh, battle and uh, the Germans eventually started putting into this bunker gas, uh, uh, killing gas, and uh, the Jewish people at a certain point that were still inside, they decided they will commit a mass murder. So it's a similar story to the story of the Masada. Uh, where you also, if you remember, when the Jewish people rebelled against the Romans, uh, they, uh, they, they, one of their places of operations was Masada, and at the end of the of the battle with the Romans, when it was certain that they will lose, uh, the fighters of Masada committed also a mass suicide. So this is a monument that is remembering this story. You can see a flag of Israel over here. Uh, there's much more flags when there is this commemoration of remembering the Warsaw uh, ghetto uprising. 
and there is also a lot of stones as you can see here Jewish people put stones uh, instead of flowers in a lot of cases although in Warsaw uh, this is a little uh, a bit uh, a little bit different situation because the Jewish uh, because uh, a certain tradition evolved here that you put the the yellow flowers uh, I will have it in the description what what it's called exactly uh, under the the monuments in a place of memory but most Jewish people would put stones and not flowers this is the Jewish way of remembering because flower is problematic because you have to kill it to uh, to remember something eventually if you put a flower it will lose life uh, because it's cut from the ground and it's actually killing something to remember something so the Jewish people put on put the stones and the stones don't die of course you don't have to kill anything to remember something so maybe that will help you understand why Jewish people don't put flowers uh, they prefer putting stones so this is the place of the bunker and now we'll go to the Umstadtplatze train station from which the Jewish people traveled uh, to Treblinka and you might think Treblinka what is Treblinka I didn't hear about Treblinka Treblinka is not as known as Auschwitz but actually Treblinka is even uh, and even worse if you can say that camp um, than Auschwitz because Auschwitz was a combination of a working camp uh, a slave camp and a death camp eventually it was transformed into one of the biggest death camps in the world but Treblinka was just a death camp and people that traveled to Treblinka uh, their life span was very very short from the moment they arrived to the moment that they got to the um, uh, to the crematoria was very short and over 900,000 Jewish people died in Treblinka uh, and most of them this is also uh, significant is that most of them were Polish Jews you see Auschwitz was an international camp people were coming from all over Europe uh, but here in Treblinka most of the Jews that died in Treblinka were the Jews that lived in Poland and Warsaw is much closer to Treblinka than it is to Auschwitz therefore it was easier for the Germans to transport uh, the Jewish people to Treblinka rather than Auschwitz so now we're, wa uh, we're gonna walk a little bit uh, today is Saturday so it's very quiet it's a day off in Poland also so it's not very busy and as you can see we have a very nice weather it's um, about 27 degrees Celsius so very nice very warm sunny uh, perfect weather to really do things like that to do a tour and uh, as you will see uh, we're not very far from the center of Warsaw so we'll try to travel also to a little bit closer to the center of Warsaw I would like to show you also this the city a little bit maybe since I am here so please let me know in the comments if this is interesting to you because I have no idea if I should be doing videos like this this is a test and um, I'm trying this out but I want to hear from you what do you think is it worth doing um, or you're just interested in, in, in Jerusalem or Israel <laughs> uh, which is fine I can do that also 
Uh, but maybe for some of you this will be quite interesting to learn a little bit about the history uh, of the Jewish people uh, in Europe because a huge um, community lived here of Jewish people and actually what you see in Israel today many of the things that you see in Israel today developed in Europe the whole Ashkenazi Jew culture it developed here in Eastern Europe and Western Europe uh, a lot of the clothing that the Jewish people have today it developed here not in Israel so to understand certain things in Israel you need to understand what happened here so you can see we are on the right track because you can see more of those monuments over here and we are now very very close to the monument where uh, the train station Umstadtplatze that's how the Germans called it was located so let's try to cross the road here and not get hit by a car this is a view So Warsaw is a very modern city now, you know, you have to remember that the whole city was basically destroyed during World War II, so everything had to be rebuilt, mm. and it was, unfortunately it was, it was uh, rebuilt in a big amount by the Soviets, uh, because Poland was not liberated after World War II, it was it, it got from one occupation to another occupation, a Soviet occupation and after uh, the Soviets started ruling here, they started building things and a lot of the uh, buildings are from that period and they're not very nice buildings uh, I will show you one uh, today so continue to watch Anyways, this is the, the place that remembers this, uh, this place of gathering and transportation of Jewish people uh, to Treblinka death camp. So you have the names of people that, uh, uh, that were killed that were transported of course some of them uh, because you can see here over 300,000 Jews were transported from the ghetto uh, from the Warsaw ghetto to the chambers of the extermination camps so a lot a lot of people and the design of he of of uh, of this place is quite interesting if you look at it uh, you can see uh, the cart uh, on the train this is what it represents the doors that would open and uh, what you see here above are trees that are broken down those represents the lights that were cut off and killed but if you look today there is a tree that is growing here and this represents that this evil plan of killing the Jewish people did not work they were able to to re-establish themselves to be reborn and today 
we have the nation of Israel something we did not have during World War II but shortly after World War II Israel was created so even though we are talking about so many evil things here when you look at the big picture Hitler and the Nazis were not successful because Israel is alive today I'm Israel high Israel lives what a wonderful story okay so we'll continue now okay guys so once again we are in this Pauline Museum area and the monument honoring the ghetto uprising fighters uh, this is where you enter the museum maybe one day I'll do a tour of the museum let me know if you would be interested in that anyways we came from that direction this is where the Umstadt Platz uh, is and uh, the bunker uh, it was in uh, in that direction over there so it's like a 10 minute walk from here and then we'll go on, I'm gonna go over there you see like a big building sticking out a blue building I don't know how well you can see this but this is where the biggest synagogue in Warsaw stood so we're gonna go now there check out this area and then we're gonna go to an area which also used to be on the edges of the ghetto and we'll see one of the only synagogues that is still functioning here in Warsaw so we're gonna go there so one final look at the monument and the museum And now we're, our next step will be the, the location of the Jewish Institute and uh, the location of the biggest synagogue of Warsaw that was destroyed by the Germans. Okay guys, so we are now uh, next to this blue building yeah, that you can see and we are basically on in a place where the ghetto was ending actually where you see this big building now there used to be the biggest synagogue called the great synagogues uh, standing here the biggest synagogue in Warsaw and this synagogue uh, originally was part of the ghetto but then as the ghetto was getting smaller and smaller as people were uh, transported to the death camps to Treblinka uh, the synagogue got out uh, was not part of the ghetto area anymore so uh, the Germans used it as a, as a storage place and uh, because it was a big building they used storage things that they confiscated and was storage all, uh, all in that and after the ghetto uprising when it was brutally pacificated by the Germans uh, the final act of showing the dominance of Nazis was the destruction of the synagogue and it was blown up and that was the final act of the ghetto uprising and what is interesting about this building is that after the war there were even plans to rebuild this synagogue uh, but they were abandoned quickly and they had in mind of building something here and it was a plan of building this, this big building and uh, even in, in the 50s they had plans to build this building but for many many years they couldn't they couldn't build anything in this place 
and only in 1991 this building was completed and of course there's many um, reasons why that happened but one of the one of the theories says that after the synagogue got blown up the rabbis put a curse on this place and nothing really uh, was supposed to stand in this place and for many many years uh, that was the case they had the problems with the companies that started building these buildings there were some protests from the Jewish communities so many different things but eventually they were able to overcome this and in 1991 uh, this building was built and what is interesting that they had the rabbis come and reverse this curse after this building was was built so let's go now closer to this place okay so to give you some again orientation where we are uh, this would be the edge of the ghetto this is where the ghetto would end the ghetto would be in that direction and in that direction okay so in those two directions uh, also a little bit in that direction but basically from over there this is the end of the ghetto the center of the city today is is that over there you can see like a tower sticking out We'll go closer to this area later on uh, and we'll uh, cross the road now uh, because uh, on the other side uh, you will be able to see how the synagogue looked and also there is an institute of Jewish studies in this place now so we'll visit that too because there are some interesting things for you to see there so now we're gonna cross using this underground passage so you know poland we have kfc pizza hut all, all the fast foods this is actually a metro station called ratusz arsenal but we're not gonna use the metro we're just going to use it for uh, crossing so this this is where you would enter the metro uh, but we're just crossing the road here once again this kind of tall building that stands now in this place uh, behind this building in that direction you have the old city of, of Warsaw now, of course it's uh, I joke as the, all, uh, the newest new city in the world because basically the whole old city was destroyed by the Germans and it was rebuilt after the war in a style that looks like a, like an old city but it's really new everything's new so it's the oldest i mean it's the newest old city in the world you can say and behind this building this blue building uh, there is this 
the Institute of Jewish Studies. So there is also a library in there. And uh, the reason why I came here is the fact uh, that mm, this is a, a very important institute that is uh, studying the history of Jewish people in in Poland. You can see the, the Hebrew letters over there, and here is written Polish. So they actually were working on the Ringebloom uh, archives, and uh, uh, the Ringebloom archives are all the types of documents uh, that the secret Jewish organizations was gathering inside the ghetto and documented all the crimes that happened inside the ghetto uh, of Warsaw. And eventually these uh, documents were gathered, put into um, tubes uh, that were buried and uh, they found that the, the documents after the war they didn't find one of the tubes in which they believed more documents were but thanks to the fact that the documents were found and the fact that they were doing the documentation we know about all the crimes that were happening inside the ghetto so this is quite uh, quite interesting So there's a Azusa here, ah, but unfortunately, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, today it's closed, <laughs> of course it's Shabbat, uh, that was silly of me to think that they might be open. No, no, przepraszam. Bo jest zamknięte, nie? Zamknięte. No, dobra. Dobra, dobra, dziękuję. Okay, so uh, the person told me basically that today it's uh, it's closed, but we can come tomorrow. I don't know if I will, but you can also go inside. There's a nice coffee place here, and uh, they of course have the muse a small museum uh, inside that is showing you the. Um, the process of finding the archives, the Ringebloom archives. So uh, there should be like a, a play uh, inside this uh, blue building. There should be a uh, a replica of the synagogue, showing you how it looked. But mm, I don't know if I'll be able to see it. If not, I will put it. Um, like on the um, in this video so that you can see it uh, but anyways this synagogue was the biggest and it was a, a reformed synagogue so the reformed Judaism was functioning here and actually it's very interesting uh, because uh, some of the worship services were held in the Polish language, not in Hebrew, because it was reformed. A lot of the Jewish people that attended the synagogue were businessmen. They were operating in the modern world uh, back then, of course. So, and some of them didn't even know Hebrew or Yiddish. So the services were actually held in Polish and that's that's quite interesting. Okay. So now we're going to go to yet another place uh, to see um, the only functioning synagogue in Warsaw. So um, Maybe I said it wrong. There are some synagogues that are working in Poland, but this is like 
the only synagogue that only uh, that has like a building that uh, physical building that survived the war and uh, the Jewish community in Warsaw today is very small unfortunately and uh, Mm, the synagogue that we will visit will be an Orthodox synagogue. Of course, we will not go inside. I will just show you the uh, the location of the synagogue. We'll go around, and also a very interesting church that is next to it. And I will share you share with you some very interesting story connected to this church uh, because there were some amazing things happening uh, in this church. So we'll go in that direction. Once again, a view on this building. We were over there uh, where the Pauline Museum was, behind those buildings. This is basically the, mm, the neighborhood called Muranov, where the ghetto, most of the ghetto was located. Okay guys, I made a small detour here. Um, we are now on Ulica Chłodna in Warsaw. And the reason why we are here is because uh, if you look here, you can see a modern installation, like a metal one and wires going to the other side. And uh, this is built here to remember that in this place the wooden bridge stood that connected one part of the ghetto with the other. And this bridge, through this bridge you went from the big ghetto to the little ghetto I mentioned before. And under this bridge there was a functioning street so you have a lot of pictures, historical pictures showing you this place, uh, showing you this bridge that was connecting those two uh, parts of the ghetto. And this of course is famous for the Schindler movies mm, and this was actually a very strategic place for the Germans as they could observe people uh, uh, crossing from one part of the ghetto to the other part of the ghetto. So. Um, today, of course, the bridge is not existent. Actually, it did not function that long after the little ghetto, the so-called little ghetto was liquidated. Uh, the bridge was no longer functioning. But it's, it's important to remember that this is the location where it stood. And as you can see, this is the modern outlook of this place. And uh, the sad part about this is that as the ghetto was functioning, life was happening here. People were traveling uh, by trams under the bridge and uh, they were able to see the people from the ghetto. Of course, uh, this was during war, so things were not as peaceful as they used to be. But anyways, it was much better than in the ghetto so here is a place where the two worlds collided and people could see each other okay so i just wanted to show you this place because i think it's also interesting to see how it looked and how it looks now so now we're gonna go to the uh, to the Orthodox synagogue and the famous church I was talking to you about. So let's go. Uh, before I before I leave, I, I, I just noted something that I want to share with you. So mm, you can see like uh, like installation here. This is back basically showing you where the wall of the ghetto stood. So it stood here. 
this is where the ghetto would end and now to go to the other part of the ghetto you would have to use this bridge that was here I was located here and the ghetto continued over there so this is this is just showing you where the ghetto wall would stand and this is where you would cross to the other side okay so now we're leaving <laughs> Hello guys again, now we are uh, in another part of Warsaw, not very far from where we were, I, I hope you can you could see that as we were traveling through, the, uh, through Warsaw with a car, uh, but we are standing next to a church, which is a very important element to understanding this complicated history during World War II. This is the Church of All Saints. And uh, before the war, this was the biggest church in Warsaw. And uh, when the ghetto was created, this church became part also of the small ghetto. And what is interesting about this church is while the war was happening, while the ghetto was established here, uh, the priest that was managing this church was Marceli Godlewski. And why am I mentioning him? I'm mentioning him because before the war started, he was, uh, you could say, a radical. He was uh, criticizing the Jewish community. You could even say that he was anti-Semitic in his words. He was very national and he was very, very... Mm, negative uh, persona if you talk about the Jewish community but when the war started and the ghetto was created uh, his position totally changed because he started helping out the Jewish community through the church you see that the priests uh, that were in the ghetto for example, in this case, in this church, the priests were more privileged. They were about, they were allowed to leave the ghetto. They were um, they were uh, allowed to do much more things than the normal people. And he used this power that he had in the ghetto to help out a lot of the Jewish people, no matter what is their religion. Uh, because what uh, must be also said is that there was a community of Jewish people in Warsaw that were actually Christians, Catholic Christians, and they attended this church. And of course, the Germans uh, did not differentiate, uh, you know, they, for them there was not, not a difference whether you were a Catholic uh, or an uh, Orthodox Jew or a secular Jew. It didn't matter, as long as you were Jewish, as long as you had Jewish blood, you had to go to the ghetto. So even though uh, some Jewish people were Christians, they still were locked in the ghetto. And uh, this uh, priest started helping out a lot of the Jewish people that found themselves in this situation. So he was organizing uh, soup kitchens, he was organizing the transportation of food from the Aryan side to the ghetto due to the fact that he was able to travel in and out. So an interesting story in this whole drama that was happening. And I'm telling you this to show you that, that not everything um, is black and white. Uh, some characters if you would hear his preaching before the war, you would say, oh, what an anti-Semite. But then, if you find out that this person actually became the righteous among the nations, he was honored by Yad Vashem. You can see uh, two sides of one person. So I thought I mentioned this 
mm, because it's quite interesting and also uh, another person that's that's connected to this church is uh, Ludwig Hirschfeld uh, he was an expert in microbiology a doctor a professor so he was hiding here in this church during uh, the war he was Jewish of course and he was the one that actually uh, began the basis for categorizing blood types so he's responsible for the different blood types that we recognize today for a b a b and zero he was uh, the one that actually developed the study of these uh, things and uh, now we will go to the only standing synagogue in Warsaw that wasn't destroyed and that is actually functioning today so once again the church of saints and as you can see this is now a modern part of Warsaw we're very close to the center now So it's not very busy today as you can see even though we are like in the heart of Warsaw uh, and it's because a lot of the offices are just not working today it's Saturday so people are just sitting in cafes relaxing enjoying the weekend So, if you would not know, <laughs> it would be very difficult to find this place because it's like hidden behind different buildings. So once again, this is the, the church that I was talking to you about over there. Uh, over here is like the center of Warsaw. Um, and we're gonna go this direction. <laughs> So there is actually a, a kosher shop here where you can buy kosher food. Um, there's not a lot of those places now in Poland, so uh, this is one of the places where you can buy certain products for different Jewish holidays. Oh no. Okay, so the the place is locked. Let's see what it says. Okay, so you can't enter through this place now because there's some renovation happening. But basically this is the synagogue and as you can see it's like hidden in this forest of tall buildings, trees. So it's not that easy to find. And uh, this is the synagogue, it's called the uh, synagogue of, uh, of Nozhikov as the family that uh, founded this building and this is the kosher shop over here okay so not much to see here now it's very quiet peaceful but this is basically you know the only synagogue that survived again it survived because it was a storage place uh, the Germans used it as storage and eventually it wasn't destroyed and at some point the Germans even allowed certain worship in the synagogue 
Uh, but then as the transports to Treblinka began it all stopped but the building itself wasn't destroyed so um, it's not like the fate of many 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 synagogues uh, that were in Poland that were burned destroyed and really today there is not not much left uh, synagogues not only the synagogues were destroyed the cemeteries were destroyed everything that was a reminder of the Jewish community in Poland basically Hitler wanted to wipe out everything that is connected to the Jewish people so the result of this is of course the fact that today Poland is basically for Jewish people a one big graveyard and a lot of Jewish people are actually very afraid to come to Poland because they learned all those stories all those horrible stories that happened here and uh, some of them which is ironic and quite hard to understand maybe is that Jewish people are more afraid to come to Poland than, the Ger than to Germany uh, because of the fact that so many people their own people were killed in Poland that Poland was transformed into this great machine this killing machine that killed uh, the Jewish people at Poland is used as a facility uh, by the Germans so of course it was practical as cruel as, as it sounds for Germans to do that in Poland because this is where the, the most of Jewish people uh, were located that was the biggest Jewish community in Europe Poland Ukraine and Russia and here the extermination of Jewish people happened through the concentration camps through the gas chambers through the crematoria and in Russia as Germany attacked the Soviet Union they also killed 1.5 about 1.5 million people on the territories of the Soviet Union but they killed them in a different way they killed them by bullets they started they started shooting them and burying them in mass graves and as they learned that this is not an effective way that it's causing a lot of stress for the German soldiers they started thinking of an alternative way and the end result of that of that evolution of their thought of killing the end product uh, was the gas chambers and the crematoria so this is a sad story of Poland and this is why Jewish people are afraid to come to Poland today because when they go to school they learn about what happened in Poland they learn those horrible stories and it's no wonder that they don't really know what to expect when they come to Poland of course as you can see Poland now is it's a pretty peaceful country and of course it's a country which is neighboring a war that is happening now in Ukraine and it's affecting Poland there is a lot of refugees now coming to Poland from Ukraine and of course this is putting a lot of stress on many people but basically uh, I don't feel like it's dangerous for Jewish people in Poland uh, of course you find anti-semites everywhere you know wherever you go so uh, this is not like um, like it's a it's a problem that that is resolved but basically it's not a very scary place 
and um, if you want to understand the roots of some of the Jewish uh, history some roots of Jewish even cooking uh, Jewish culture uh, you need to come to Poland because this is where it was created so we'll go to one more place and then we'll uh, wrap it up for today so once again a skyline on on this place where we are so maybe I'll tell you one more thing you see this big building over there this is a, a gift from the Soviet Union to Poland and basically it was a gift that you could not refuse so it was given and built by the Soviets and you can see the architecture of it it's very like Moscow like if you go to Moscow you will see buildings like that there's about eight buildings of this type in uh, Moscow they're called the sisters uh, but we have one also in Poland they build one in uh, in Latvia mm, I think one in Estonia also uh, Ukraine uh, so they build it like to show uh, their dominance over this territory and you know there's a lot of discussion from what I heard about, uh, among people living in Warsaw some people are hating this building saying oh it's a reminder of these dark times of the Soviet Union it should we we should destroy it uh, we should totally get rid of it and some are saying no no it's okay you know it's part of the history it's a legacy uh, there's no sense in uh, destroying it and actually there is a lot of things inside this building uh, there is um, a library a, a cinema even a, a discotheque a, an observation point so many many things are inside this building so it's like a useful building now and uh, but some people say that there is a wonderful view from this from this building the best of Warsaw if you go to the top you can see uh, the Warsaw from above and they say it's the best view because you cannot see this building from that view <laughs> so it's like a like a joke um, but anyways um, I will try to also show you a panorama of Warsaw in my last uh, episode in my last uh, entry of this video so I don't know if we'll go to the top of this building and you will be able to see the panorama of Warsaw and I'll from from a high point I will try to show you different places uh, or we'll go to another building which also has an observation point I haven't decided yet so you will find out in the next section of this video okay guys so <laughs> I was telling you that uh, the next shot will be from a panorama of Warsaw but I saw this installation of murals and I thought it's worth mentioning because it's talking about what I was presenting today so it's uh, of course it's an interpretation it's a it's an artistic uh, mural sh uh, created to cause attention to the things that were happening and you see uh, here on the first uh, one you see the ghetto is in flames this is the title of it and you see some girls that were part of the uprising uh, movement and the next one is showing you uh, first of all the destruction after the uprising everything basically demolished uh, you see the faces from the monument uh, of the ghetto uprising heroes that they are in flames and of course uh, the eye of a person that's watching all of this and in his eyes there are also flames here is another one uh, of a smuggling activity during uh, the, mm, the time when the ghetto was active 
there was a lot of smuggling going on from the Aryan side to the to the ghetto and many times children were even involved in the smuggling activity because they were small because they were able to get through different uh, walls different holes in the wall and they were able to transport certain things uh, and here is another one showing you the walk of death from the ghetto to the train station the up uh, Umstadtplatz uh, station and basically it was very dangerous moment when that was happening when those marches were created because everybody who was uh, caught up on the way uh, very often they would join the, the people even if they were not Jewish uh, they would find themselves part of this crowd suddenly and they would go with them to a train that would basically take them to a death camp um, and here is it's talking about the final moments of the ghetto when uh, the Germans decided it's time to move the majority of the people from the ghetto now to Treblinka to the Umstadtplatz and, and try to li uh, eliminate the ghetto and the people that are living in, in it and uh, of course uh, in the beginning they did not tell everybody what was going on they said it's a verification a moment that some people would be verified but then it turned out that everybody was gathered and uh, they were supposed to be taken to um, to the train station and here it's another one showing you uh, the people that caused this so the Nazi Germany soldiers that were doing this uh, here it's talking about how the Germans uh, when the uprising happened so the uprising happened because this action of eliminating the ghetto totally was happening so uh, the people in the ghetto thought to themselves this is their, our last chance to do something to fight so that's how the uprising started but after the uprising was uh, this was uh, was stopped by the Germans uh, they basically started burning burning all the houses inside the ghetto to make sure that nobody's left and there's nobody hiding and here is another one uh, showing you the great synagogue I was talking about that got blown up uh, at the end of the uh, the ghetto uprising and that was like a celebration for the Germans to show that they won that uh, uh, they would want to show the revenge for the uprising so they blew up the biggest most beautiful synagogue in Warsaw that was standing and this is the last one it's called the two flags and basically um, it's talking uh, about the fact that when the uprising started uh, the Jewish people weren't sure if they should start the uprising and then get out on the Aryan side and join the Polish community that was also preparing for another uprising that was uh, gonna happen a year after that um, but basically that did not happen they fought till the end and most of the people in the ghetto were killed by the Germans so they really never reunited the two uprisings never happened at the same time um, and the Polish uprising happened a year after and also it was not successful and the retaliation of the Germans was the total destruction of Warsaw so I thought I will share with you this uh, moral because it's exactly about what we were talking about so um, I thought it's, it would be nice to also share this. So now, let's go see if we can see a panorama of Warsaw somewhere. Okay guys, so we are standing now at the bottom of this uh, building, the Soviet area, uh, era building. It's called the Palace of Culture and Science. And it's right in the middle of 
the center of Warsaw today. So you have the Marriott Hotel over there, you have the main train station right there, Warszawa Centralna, mm, other buildings. So this is this is like the second biggest building in Poland actually, if you consider the uh, the size uh, of it and also how much space it takes. And actually, I just wanted to show you how big this place is. Uh, so we will we'll have to go from the other side to enter the and the place that will allow us to go to the top of the building to see the panorama so once again this building here but all those structures here around are also part of this building and uh, there is a, a cinema over here but there's many many things that you can find here so let's uh, walk around just to give you the scale of this of this thing. So once again the panorama over there on Warsaw. And uh, it's pretty big. Well, this gives you a little bit of a feel of the of Warsaw today, how it looks. People are enjoying the weekend. Uh, here is a theater in this place. It's also part of this palace of culture and science. And, um, this is the site from which we will be able to go to the observation point. At least I hope so. So let's see. I don't know if it's here. I don't think so. Okay, I think it's from from over there. So there's you can take a tour of Warsaw actually. And there's really old buses from like Soviet era or you know Peta L. Uh, which is the Polish Republic uh, era and uh, it's like allowing you to go back in time and see uh, the history of Poland during the Soviet era so they have those buses that function in those times so I don't know if it's Actually, that's special because those buses are pretty nasty as far as, you know, like the experience. I mean, if you have a nostalgia or you want to feel how people, <laughs> how it used to feel to travel a bus like that, I guess it's, it's worth it. But, but uh, some people like it, some people are not so uh, keen on that. Anyways. There's another uh, theater over there and this is the entry that will allow us to go up. That's how you see, you can even see on those statues, it's like the Soviet era, you know, persona, big, large. You know, the columns, all of that. Uh, there's some elements of Greek architecture, Roman arch architecture that you can see. 
so let's see how many people are actually waiting in line I hope not too many because uh, maybe a few it's the day of oh my gosh okay guys so change of plans I will not go to the top of this building because it wouldn't be a nice experience anyways there's too many people I would have to wait in line for a very long time which I wouldn't mind but the problem is that even if, if it would be my turn I would be going up with a lot of people so it would be very crowded over there if I would go and uh, it wouldn't be a good experience also for you because I would have to like try to find certain shots so instead of that I will try to find like a nice drone footage of Warsaw and I will show you uh, Warsaw from above and I will uh, show you the places that we visited uh, so that you have an idea of how big the area is throughout this video I was showing you different maps uh, also that helped you to understand so anyways I am thankful for your attention thank you for uh, being with me today on this journey around Warsaw the Jewish history of Warsaw the tragic history that we talked about uh, and uh, I hope you were able to learn something new I hope this was helpful to you uh, as always I encourage you to support uh, my channel if you think that my work is worth uh, your support uh, you can do that the best way to do it is through the patron page I will uh, leave a link in the description of this video so that you can click on it and go ahead uh, to the patron page I am very very thankful, thankful to all of you guys who are already supporting the channel this really helps me to do things like that, to travel, to uh, get different shots, uh, stock, shoot, uh, stock pictures for you and also helps me to pay for, for gas, for, for everything. So your support is greatly appreciated and I hope to develop this channel. I hope maybe to show you other places in Europe, maybe also in Poland, um, but let me know again I'm asking this let me know if this was interesting if this was something that you thought was worth watching um, so I will be eager to read your comments uh, thank you for all of them thank you for all the likes I wish you a good day and I will see you in my next episode Shalom <laughs>